I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. He has promised that he'd open all of heaven. And brother, it could happen any day. When God's people humble themselves and call on Jesus And they look to heaven expecting as they pray I just feel like something good is about to happen And brother, this could be that very day I have learned in all that happens just to praise Him For I know He's working all things for my good Every tear I shed is worth all the investment. Oh, I know he'll see me through, he said he would. He has promised I nor here can hardly fathom all the things he has in store for those who pray. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be that very day. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be a sister, this could be a brother, this could be that very day. 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 Morning, everyone. Nice to this be is here the again. day that the Lord hath made. Let's yes. rejoice and be glad in it. I have tasted of freedom. I can go where He's leading. For shackles can hold me no more. I have learned of life's essence, and I stand in His presence. Sing with my heart, he is Lord. Their days filled with sorrow and plans for tomorrow. But this is the time I must sing. And I know there's a reason why in his own season God gives me a song I can sing. Well, keep silent, ye mountains, ye fields and ye fountains, for this is the time I must sing. It's the time to sing praises to the rock of the ages, for this is the time I must sing. If I've seen and I've done and I've gained and I've won all the good things that life ever brings. Still I've tasted enough of life's miracle stuff that forever I just have to say. Well, keep silent, ye mountains, ye fields, and ye fountains. For this is the time I must sing. It's the time to sing praises to the rock of the ages. For this is the time I must sing. If the rocks would cry out, should his praises die out, then the stones must keep silent as long as I breath for the singing his praise will keep ringing and i will keep singing my song well, keep silent ye mountains ye fields and ye fountains but this is the time i must sing it's the time to sing praises to the rock of the ages this is the time I must sing. Well, keep silent, ye mountains, ye fields, and ye fountains. For this is the time I must sing. It's the time to sing praises to the rock of the ages. 
For this is the time I must sing. This is the time I must sing. serving the Lord Jesus Christ. He's still waiting for those that don't, un that don't know him personally. Trust each one here today knows him personally as their Savior. And it wouldn't be a Sunday morning at Austin if the brothers weren't on the front row. <laughs> Good to see you guys again. How many are hearing us for the very first time? All right. There's a a few people. Doesn't seem possible that Ginger and I are in her. How many years have we been singing together? You tell me now. You tell me. I don't know. How many so years have we been married? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whoops. <laughs> 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 
But it's, it's a great number of years. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, yeah. No, but we've been singing this as our 62nd year. Yeah. You know I just about fainted right there when I missed that word. You did? Yeah. I, um, this has never happened to me before until well, just a short time ago. I forgot what dehydrated means. Mm. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? And I forget to drink water. And I, I, I thought, you know, I get up once in a while now, these days, and I think, oh, my head is so funny. I, I, I better go to the doctor. I just can't figure out what it is. And I forgot to drink water, and oh. I, I've never missed a word in that song before, and I, my mind went blank, and my head got funny. <laughs> 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 so anyway. Uh, but it doesn't seem. Carry on. Yeah, but years ago, I was talking to Vern. <laughs> it doesn't seem possible that 62 years have come and gone down through the years. And when we used to come down and do a television program with yeah. Vern and the cast, yeah. and, and then do a, a concert, and it just is hard to believe where the years have come and gone. And many of you know, uh, there's, I talked to one gentleman that's been, that's heard us almost the, the 62 years, he's here this morning. But we've only been married 58. Yeah. Or seven. What yeah. is it? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> these things happen these but days. You, you know, but I was telling. Well, the, well wait, I'm not oh, finished okay, with my go story. Ahead. Yeah. So <laughs> you wonder 57 years married, 62 years singing, what happened? Well, we sang and fought for about six mm. and a half years. Mm. And then we got married and we sing and fight now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we feel so connected with the church. We get your uh, newsletter every month, and I so enjoy the pastor, the pastors, Pastor Dale and Pastor Mike's, what they write each each week, and it just it. But you, it, you know what though? We get the monthly letter. Monthly letter, yeah. You can tell he doesn't work a computer, yeah. can't you? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> see, they know what I'm going to say. Yeah. I get their weekly letter, yeah. see, or, or their prayer requests yeah. or whatever, and I love that. Yeah. yeah, okay. Well, let's just go on to another song. <laughs> We're here to sing, I guess, because yeah. the pastor's going to be preaching. He, he told us, he said, I'm the preacher here. Yeah. You guys sing, and I'll do the preaching. Yeah. Did you say that, Pastor? <laughs> no. There's a new ship sailing in the morning In the twinkling of an eye She'll take me home I can hardly wait to see her coming Captain from the shore. I can almost see her in the distance. Her sails are high, what a sight to see. I am waiting now with great anticipation. Her 
sails are high, or what a sight to see. I am waiting now with great anticipation for this new ship is coming after me. I can almost see her in the distance. Her sails are high, what a sight to see. I am waiting now with great anticipation for this new ship. Coming after me for this new ship is coming after me. All right. Thank you. Can you thank you so much? I'm going to sing just as long as it takes for a song to make sad every spirit is free. I'm going to keep making music that carries a secret that Jesus is liberty. I'm going to turn off the sounds that would drag people down to the bit of despondency. With sweet happy tune is coming soon for us children like you and me. It's a song that'll carry a message along through the darkest of foggy nights. And a tune is the rope that can drove a man hope when he's going on for the third time. It's a sweet melody that can cut your heart free from the chains of the past to be. You can suddenly see through the sweet harmony a path for your wandering feet. Well, I'm going to sing just as long as it takes for a song to make sad, heavy spirits free. I'm going to keep making music that carries a secret that Jesus is liberty. I'm going to turn off the sounds that would drag people down to the pit of despondency. With a sweet happy tune, he's coming soon for his children like you and me. Don't tell me the world is a hopeless old place and I might as well just give in. To the doom and gloom, life's a waiting room for the blow that'll do us all in. Can't sympathize when before my eyes is a hope shining bright as day. I gotta follow the song that keeps drawing me on with my feet dancing all the way. I'm gonna sing just as long as it takes for a song to make sad every spirit's free. I'm gonna keep making music that carries a secret that Jesus is liberty. I'm gonna turn off the sounds that would drag people down to the pit of despondency. With a sweet happy tune, he's coming soon for his children like you and me. I'm going to sing just as long as it takes for a song to make sad, heavy spirits free. I'm going to keep making music that carries a secret that Jesus is liberty. I'm going to turn off the sounds that would drag people down to the bit of despondency. With a sweet happy tune, he's coming soon for his children like you and me. Yeah, with a sweet happy tune, he's coming soon for children like you and me. All right. I'm here in this battle. A wounded soldier am I The enemy's raging around me And he's crowding my mind Lord, I'm calling out to you For you know what I need So while I'm facing this battle 
send a refuge for me. Lord, send me a refuge to hide from the storm. Wrap me in your sweet love. Keep me safe from all harm. When the trials of this world send me down on my knees, Won't you hear my prayer? Oh, Lord, send a refuge for me. Here alone in this darkness, not a light do I see. I need a message from you, Lord, to know you're still here with me. For, Lord, I'm trying with all my strength not to drown in this sea. So while I'm facing this task, Lord, all that I ask Please send a refuge for me. Lord, send me a refuge to hide from the storm. Wrap me in your sweet love. Keep me safe from all harm. When the trials of the Send me down on my knees. Won't you hear my prayer? Oh, Lord, send a refuge for me. Won't you hear my prayer? Oh, Lord, send a Let's do one more before the pastor comes to speak. Hmm? Yeah. Now, this is a song that we recorded how many years ago? 40 years ago. Over 40 years yeah, ago. Yeah, over, probably over 40. You're going to remember this one, Vern. <laughs> oh, this is really great. I can hardly keep my feet still. I can't usually keep them still anyway. But I really just want to dance on this one. I've never been this homesick before. Is that a good, isn't that a great one for today? Yeah. Wow, it's coming, folks. <clears throat> yeah. Isn't that nice? There's a light in the window, the table spread in splendor. Someone standing by the open door. I can see the crystal river, so I must be near forever. Lord, I've never been this home sick before. And I'll see the bright light shine. It's just about home. I can see my father standing at the door. This world has been a wilderness. I'm ready for deliverance. Oh, Lord, I've never been this homesick before. I can see the family gather, 
sweet faces all familiar but no one's old or feeble anymore now this lonesome heart is crying think i'll spread my wings for flying lord i've never been this homesick before and now see the bright light shine it's just about home time i can see my father standing at the door this world has been a wilderness i'm ready for deliverance oh lord i've never been this homesick before and now see the bright light shine it's just about home time i can see my father standing at the door this world has been a wilderness i'm ready for deliverance oh lord i've never been this home sick before oh lord i've never been this home sick before all right not to go to singing. <laughs> We're glad you're here. A friend of mine um, was asked to speak at a large meeting and he'd, he'd never done anything like that before. And it was a, a Christian meeting. He was there to share the gospel. And, and so uh, as he sat on the platform waiting to be introduced, he was feeling more and more inadequate and unworthy and he leaned over to the guy sitting next to him and said, I don't know why I'm here. I, I don't know why the Lord wants me to do this. And the guy flashed a grin at him and said, well, you're here because the donkey's busy tonight. <laughs> and uh, that was just the answer that he needed. God can speak any way he pleases in any time and through anyone. He even did speak once through a donkey. And Jesus told people if, that were criticizing, he said, if these folks who are praising me right now, if they were to stop, the stones would start yelling out, just as you sang a few minutes ago. Uh, God will uh, speak when he wants to, and he will get his word out. And uh, he used my friend because he wanted to. And he uses you and me to speak into people's lives because he wants to. And I, I know I'm inadequate, but I'm thankful that he lets me I'll be up here for him anyway. And one man that God used in an unusual way was Elijah. The Old Testament ends with a reference to Elijah uh, hundreds of years after he was born and lived. And the New Testament mentions him more than any other prophet over two dozen times. And so he's an important man in the Bible. We'll spend a few weeks looking at his life because God used him in an extraordinary and enduring way. But one reason that we need to pay attention to Elijah is this verse from James. Elijah was a man just like us. It's not that he was some kind of a different heroic kind of person that we never could attain to. He was a man that listened to God and that God worked through. And whatever God did in his life, he can do in ours. It's up to him. Elijah lived in turbulent times, much like today. His nation had once widely honored God. They were built on, a, on following God, but they had wandered from it. Now they were pretty much ignoring him, even rebelling against him. And the government of Israel was leading the way. They not only were uh, ignoring God like the others, they were pushing 
in the opposite direction. They were introducing idolatry and ungodliness. They twisted justice. They took advantage of the weak. And they grabbed all the power they could get and used it for their own ad advantage. And people who continued to follow God were marginalized. They were even treated as criminals just for speaking the truth. And Jezebel, the wife, was involved in seeing that many of them were killed. And Ahab, the king, was a wicked man. Their generation abandoned the influence of Moses and Samuel and David and others who had pointed them to God. And now there was only hostility towards those who followed God's way. Does that sound a bit like the way America is going? We live in tumultuous times. The foundations of America are eroding and, and sometimes are even intentionally undermined. We need grace and wisdom and courage from God to know and to do the right thing. We need to pay attention to how God has worked in other generations so we'll pay attention to him as he calls us back and we can be part of what he's doing. We need to answer his call. We need to boldly step in to action in his behalf. Israel was di disintegrating as a nation, but God had not lost interest in him. Those who had once followed him were uh, rebelling and they were getting tragic consequences. Their nation was on the verge of being destroyed, but God still cared. And he raised up a bold voice to call them back. And Elijah came and acted with authority he, his words were confirmed with miracles and God used him. Once he called out to God and God sent fire down from heaven and crowds of people were there and they couldn't help but praise God for what they saw. Another time he prayed for a little boy who had died and he said, Lord, this boy shouldn't be dead. Would you bring him back? As far as we know, that had never happened in history and yet he asked for it and God did it. And there was no crowd. Even the boy's mother was in another part of the house. But God did it to show his love as well as his power. God used Elijah to reveal who he was in a fresh way so that people would come back to him. He had no political pull. He had no military might. He had no crowds of people to insulate him from the king's anger. And yet he was protected by God and he had an impact that continued for generations. Elijah became an enduring example and so hundreds of years later when John the Baptist was to be born, an angel told John's father, he will be great in the sight of the Lord and he will go before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah. People remembered him and they knew what God meant when he said spirit and power of Elijah. John lived out in the desert and yet crowds came to him. He wore leather and and uh, ate grasshoppers. He, he was kind of a wild man, much like Elijah seems to have been. And yet he prepared the people for their Messiah. And he definitely had an impact on his generation, just as Elijah did in his own time. And in, even though the Bible says John performed no miracles, there are all kinds of miracles in Elijah's time, not a single one through John the Baptist. And yet he displayed the power of God in the same way that Elijah did. When Jesus asked his disciples, who do the people think I am? They said, oh, a lot of them think you're Elijah. When Jesus was shining in heavenly glory upon a mount, the Mount of Transfiguration, who came to be with him in those moments? It was Moses and Elijah. And when Jesus was hanging on the cross and he called out to his father, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. The people who heard it uh, couldn't quite understand. And when he said, Eloi, Eloi, they thought he was saying, Elijah, Elijah. And they wondered if Elijah would come and help them right then. Elijah had an influence and an impact that continued hundreds of years after he lived. 800 years had gone by. And he still has an impact. Today, when Jewish families celebrate the Passover, they leave the door cracked open in case Elijah wants to come. They set an extra place at the table 
in every family in case Elijah shows up. They'll be ready for him. He has an impact and makes a difference in people's lives even today. And we can learn from his example. We often picture the prophets uh, calling out to large crowds of people and inviting them and challenging them and demanding even that they come back to God. And that did happen with Elijah, but as far as I can see, it was only the one time on Mount Carmel. And we'll talk about that another time. But most of the time, there weren't the crowds. What we see repeatedly in Elijah's case is him confronting an evil king. Here's what the Bible says. Ahab did more evil in the eyes of the Lord than any of those before him. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel than all the kings of Israel before him. God established the nation of Israel when he gave him a king. It was a man named Saul. He was followed by David and then Solomon. And then the kingdom was broken into two parts. The southern part was Judah. We, the people are called Jews because of that. And the northern part was still called Israel. And over a period of 200 years, Israel had 19 kings. And not a single one of them walked with God. Not a single one of them did the will of God. But Ahab was among the worst. He put up idols and worshipped them. And he led the entire nation in going after idolatry. He married a woman named Jezebel who was born in another nation where a god named Baal was worshipped. And she pushed for her new nation to be Baal worshippers instead of worshippers of God. Baal was supposedly the god of the weather. He was the storm god. He sent the rain and he caused the crops to grow. And so God challenged him on his own turf. He sent this man, Elijah, to tell the king courageously this. As surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, the God I worship and serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years unless I give the word. That's not a real uh, smart and promising way to approach a king who's power hungry, who can't stand criticism, and who's dedicated himself to a false god to say, by the way, your god loses and you're losing with him. But Elijah had one goal. He was there to please God. He wasn't afraid of the king. He wasn't afraid of, of the people who were going along with the king. It didn't matter whether the king liked it or not. It mattered if God liked it. He played to an audience of one. He's like an athlete uh, who's playing a a game, a football game. And he knows the coach is going to sit down with him on Monday and review what he did in that game on Friday night. And so every play, it doesn't matter what the crowd is saying or how the crowd is reacting. He's playing for the coach. And that's what makes a team great. And in in our time, we need to play for God. We need to live for God. It's when we sit down with him and go over the highlights that what he says is going to matter more than all the rest put together. We don't know much about Elijah. We don't know how old he was when he began his ministry. We don't know how he spent his life before that. We don't know if he was a farmer or if he had a trade. We don't know if he had a family. We don't know how he came to know God. We don't know how he knew what to say. All we know is the Bible says there there came a man named Elijah, the Tishbite. All that means is he's from a little town called Tishbe, and they still can't figure out where that was. But he had a lasting impact. We live 3,000 years later. We live 8,000 miles from where he did, but we live in similar times. Many people around us have rejected God. They're pursuing a life they think will make them happy. Many powerful people use their influence to push people away from God, not towards him. And God still has his people, just like he did then. And he calls us to be among them, to live for him and to serve him. The question is, are we available? Will we take time to listen to him? Will we follow his word? Can he send us anywhere he wants? Can he deploy us to to feed the hungry? 
to stand up for the unborn, to reach out to those who need Jesus, to use our gifts to serve him in whatever way he wants, to get involved in the political arena, or to get involved in the community needs, or to be involved with the neighbor next to us who needs kindness. Will we serve him? Crane Chapel is 86 years old. We're retirement age and, and more. The question is, are we going to retire as a church? Or are we ready to accept the challenge to keep building? Can God do new things? Can he give us a new vision? Can he trust us to serve him even when it's hard? Are we grateful for the past but focused on the future? Will we lay down our lives to accomplish his purpose? Will we take all that he's given us and give it back to him to do whatever he wants to do next? Let's make sure that God can do anything that he wants in this congregation, which means in our lives, in the way we think, in the priorities we set. We live in a time when truth is not welcome, but it still matters. When God is ignored, but he's still king. When people who shout the loudest or have the most money get the most attention, but God still speaks and God still works through humble people. Let's be his people. We need Elijah's, whether male or female, whether young or old, whether we feel ready or not, we need to be available. We need to be reliable. We need to be people who trust God and who God can trust so that he can do, make things happen that we wouldn't call possible, but they're not hard for him. Let's be his people. Let's do what God wants, and let's leave the results to him. What do you think? Are you for that? Will you do that? I want to. It's not always easy for me. I'm supposed to be a man of God, but sometimes it's hard for me to really make myself available to God in all the ways I know he wants. But I want to be that man. I'd like you to go with me. Amen? We're going to hear one more song. Um, I really appreciate what you had to say. I want to I just want to take a minute because I want to announce this next song and tell you why we're doing it. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And basically, you said what we feel. Uh, that's why we're still singing 62 years later. Um, I told Jerry not to mention this today, so I'm going to mention it myself. <laughs> but I told Roxanne the little secret, and I said, no, don't say anything. Because sometimes you have to put on uh, your professional face. I hate to say that. But it's true, because in the songs that we do, if we do so many songs about heaven and about the Lord's return and all of that, that it's really hard to get through those songs because, you know, uh, we've lost 13 of our dear friends to COVID. Um, uh, one was our bass singer. You, you probably, some of you remember him, Big Bill. He and his wife died four months apart. Now, this is all recently. So we all have grief, and it's a, an awful time right now. And therefore, I don't know why we always have done songs about heaven, but they're so encouraging to know that there's something afterward. Well, 30, uh, 37 years ago now, we were doing, going to do two songs in Malacca. And uh, my dad passed away. He went to the university. He, 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 uh, 
you know, passed out, he went to the university, he had a brain disease, and within days he was gone. He was a strong Lake Superior fisherman. He fished the way Jesus' disciples fished, with nets. That's my whole life, was that kind of a life. So it was such a shock to the whole community, but even to us. But we had to do these two concerts, and wasn't that Malacca Hunt? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And um, so we went ahead and did it. And, you know, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get through the songs. I mean, it was kind of a dumb thing to do, I thought, later. But our Reverend Peterson said, no, you need to do that. I think your dad would appreciate that, too. So that's all it took. I said, I'll never do that again. Um, so here we are, 35, 37 years later, doing it again. I'm going to be professional here. Um, my mom passed away. Now, my mom lived 37 years after my dad left. And uh, she would have been 102 in February. She died on Tuesday night. And we are on the way to the funeral this next week. So that uh, never been this homesick before. I, could, I, I couldn't get through that. You can't think about the words sometimes. You have to just do it. But we had a lady, I think I might have told you this last year, we had a lady who... She and her husband started a Christian 24-7 uh, radio station. I forgot what you call those, but uh, anyway. So to have Christian music 24-7, no advertising. Uh, pod, what's that called? Uh, yeah, podcast. There you go. Thank you. Um, and so did I, do you remember me telling you this story last year? I hate to repeat myself. I don't think you did. Okay. Well, anyhow, she, uh, they were going to start this thing, and they're from South Carolina. And so she called our, our recording engineer, um, and I don't know why she called him, but she wanted to know if he knew. Uh, she's looking for vinyl. She's looking for vinyl, Vern. Vinyl's back, I understand. <laughs> but she was looking for vinyl, and she said... Uh, uh, so do you know, you know, could you help me out here? He says, oh, well, he said, I, I record a couple of people here in Minneapolis. And, well, she said, who are they? Uh, Jerry and Ginger, the song masters. Oh, she said, I, we, we know them. I have some of their albums. Oh, well, he said, I'll, I'll put you in touch. So he did, and I wrote her. And I was so curious. I said, Kathy, um, how did you get our albums? They're those big 33s, you know. We had eight tracks, we had 45s, we had 78s. <laughs> These are coming back. Anyway, oh, she said, my husband and I, every time we go into a Goodwill store or a Salvation Army, we always look for vinyl albums. And of course, they find them for a quarter and all that. You'd be amazed at how many people come up to us holding one of our albums and say, guess what I found? <laughs> and we pretend like it's the first time it's ever happened. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> but anyhow, they probably got it for a quarter. And um, so anyway, she said she, she found them there. She got three of them. So I said, well, I'll send you everything else that we have, no cost. And uh, she got so excited about it, she wrote me back, and she said, you would be amazed. Now, that scripture verse I gave you, it won't return void. When we started recording 33 years, or 62 years ago, our first album, we thought, you know, this is really cool. We're really cool. We were, we were 19 and 20, you know, and we just thought that was the biggest deal. Well, 33 albums later and 62 years later, she's telling me now on the phone, if you only knew where your music is being played today. And she started naming some countries, Malaysia, United Arab Emirates, other Muslim countries, North and South Korea, and several others. And it goes out 24 seven. So she said, when we play it here, it's being played across the world. You know, it was so powerful to us because like I said, we thought, 
we're just a couple of kids making a first album and this is really cool. So you have to remember whatever, whatever we do, no matter what field we're in, uh, it never goes unnoticed and you never, we won't know until we get to eternity, maybe the people that we've reached. Well, this next song that we're gonna do, she called me again about two months ago and she said, Ginger, I, I was listening to the song again, it was just going out across the airwaves and she said, I had to stop what I was doing because the words spoke to me so much I couldn't contain it. And um, I suppose we recorded this one 45, 50 years ago. So we're going to do it for you. But you know, the whole reason that we're all here and talking like we are today and singing like we are today, all about one word, and it's love, or God's love. So I hope you get blessed as much as she has, and I hope the rest of the world as much as we get blessed. When we, we, so we pulled it out. We pulled it out of the archives after she called us. And, and we said, oh, man, that is really beautiful, isn't it? So we put it back in. So we haven't sung it for years, but we're going to do it for you. And I, and I just, it'll speak for itself. Thank you, Ginger and Jerry. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. While you're all invited to stay for lunch, I'm going to ask uh, Linda and Miles to uh, lead the way. 
to go to the front of the line. They got married this week. So would you stand up, Miles and Linda? All right. So this isn't exactly a reception for them, but we're going to we're going to pretend it is for them, and, <laughs> and uh, we're all going to uh, catch up. It's been a long time since we had a meal all together. Would you pray with me? And Father, we thank you for that love. We thank you for a love that resulted in us knowing you and being saved and being redeemed from a wasted life to a life that matters. We want to follow you. We want to make a difference in our lives. We want you to shine through us. And so we pray that we'll be responsive as you guide and lead and speak. Thank you for what we've experienced together. We pray we'll continue to go in its glow. And we pray you'll bless the food that we share, the youth as they return. And we pray for Linda and Miles that you'll bless their life together. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. The following things that are great That aren't real But the road that I've chosen The highway of life The one that leads from Calvary to eternity With Christ I'm gonna stand up For what I stand for Fight to the finish and win the war I'm gonna keep on receiving from the one I believe in I'm gonna stand up for what I stand for. Three Hebrew children were cast in the fire long ago. So long ago. But they wouldn't bow down. No, sir, they wouldn't give in. For when the fire had died down, God was standing with them. I'm gonna stand up for what I stand for. Fight to the finish and win the war I'm gonna keep on receiving from the one I believe in 